probably gonna get the DLC. No. Well then just tell me. I'm not gonna play your disgusting games. <laughs> Welcome everyone, ignore that. Yeah. Well, by the end of this video, you're here, so let's just, uh. So mad right now. I got my favorite hood red. Red skins all over it. Okay then, let's see what this is. Since I'm not inclined to talk. I don't have any friends. Well, not now anyways. Hello everyone, um, I'm Dan Pinchbeck, I'm the creative director of The Chinese Room and this is the Dear Esther Developers Commentary. Hi, I'm Rob Briscoe. I'm the artist on Dear Esther. And I'm Jessica Curry, and I was the composer on the game. So what you're looking at today is a remake of a remake of a mod. Um, Dear Esther started off in 2007 as a Half-Life 2 mod um, that did really, really well in the modding community, which was fantastic, and as a result of that attracted the attention of Rob, who worked as the primary developer on a Source remake of the game that was released in 2012. And this year is another remake where the, it's been updated for a cross-platform release. And we wanted to add in this developer's commentary just to give you a bit more of an insight into some of the ideas behind the game as it came together. Oh! I want to know what they ate. At all. I'm guessing that's just paint. Well then, you go go. So you'll see around you in a lot of the environments. There's there's a lot of detail ingrained into everything. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do with the Esther is uh, bring the visuals up to the same kind of level of detail that. Dan and Jess had put into the other areas of the game. So um, all of the history and the kind of hidden pieces of story that are intertwined with the VOs and the music and stuff, I, I kind of wanted to bring some of that into the environments. Uh, so if you look around you, you see that there's a lot of interesting bits and pieces, a piece of paper with someone's name on it, uh, a photograph, uh, an ultrasound, all of these little bits and pieces I kind of lay it in to just kind of bring another aspect of the story uh, into the game. And also, they're actually randomized, so every time you play, you'll see something different lying around. And this is just to build on this idea that everybody has a unique experience and a unique uh, interpretation of the story. Hmm, that must be the first page of that book. So you'll see around you in a lot of the environments, there's, there's a lot of detail ingrained into everything. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do with Dear Esther is uh, bring the visuals up to the same kind of okay, level of detail. Okay, then. That well, then I can see that Jess this was a bad the decision. Of the game. So, a very bad um, All of the history, <sighs> the kind of. Excuse me, I'm going to have to go vet my anger real quick. That, uh, intertwined. The longitude and latitude, a split opened up and it beached remotely here. No matter how hard I correlate, 
it remains a singularity, an alpha point in my life that refuses all hypothesis. I return each time leaving fresh markers that I hope, in the full glare of my hopelessness, will have blossomed into fresh insight in the interim. Okay, as... Huh. Must be a chemical thing. And you see, you see what the guy was talking about earlier. I did disable that. Like before, there's some bit. This wasn't here. And now there's a map. And some cards that weren't. Yeah, he's really right. They do put a lot of work into this. And ew, that's yummy. It's probably something different in this room then too. No? Well, okay then, I'm an idiot. <sighs> well, this is an expansive world, I'm gonna guess. Um, I go along the beach first. So what I'm getting so far is, as what it says, I'm following a dead man's general. I believe it said. I'll go back to that white lighthouse later. Oh. So I'm gonna guess that's what it is. And that's what the voiceover was. So we're no longer gonna get the beautiful voices of the creators in games because lovely. lovely. Excuse me, I'm seeing if there's a run button. This game looks quite beautiful, actually. Oh. That's neat. There was once talk of a wind farm out here, away from the rage and the intolerance of the masses. The sea, they said, is too rough for the turbines to stand. They clearly never came here to experience the becalming for themselves. Personally, I would have supported it. Turbines would be a fitting contemporary refuge for a hermit. The revolution and the permanence. This is some sort of map. found the ship's manifest, crumpled and waterlogged under a stash of paint cans. It tells me that along with this present cargo, there was a large quantity of antacid yogurt bound for the European market. It must have washed out to sea. God knows there are no longer gulls or goats here to eat it. Well then, note to self, don't touch water. Your character clearly cannot swim. <laughs> so it's, also this island it has no life on it, apparently no wildlife. From what that guy said earlier. And I have no clue what that kind of yogurt is, and I don't think I meant to eat it.
Apparently a crashed ship. Bound for Europe. Oh wow, just in real life, the stairs are so fucking long. I mean, I have legs. Damn it. Actually, I would like to be in a place like this in real life. Away from everything. Sit me down with a game console. Spend the day walking. Spend the nights recording. Donnelly's book had not been taken out from the library since 1974. I decided it would never be missed as I slipped it under my coat and avoided the librarian's gaze on the way out. If the subject matter is obscure, the writer's literary style is even more so. It is not the text of a stable or trustworthy reporter. Perhaps it is fitting that my only companion in these last days should be a stolen book written by a dying man. Oh yeah, like I said, a dying ship captain. I think he crashed you then. When someone had died or was dying, or was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice, they cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boats, and know to send aid or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until Whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. Ooh, what are those down there? I can see the we sound are not like Lot's wife, you and I. We feel no particular need to turn back. There's nothing to be seen if we did. No tired old man parting the cliffs with his arms. No gifts or Bibles laid out on the sand for the taking. No tides turning or the shrieking gulls overhead. The bones of the hermit are no longer laid out for the taking. I have stolen them away to the guts of this island, where the passages all run to black and where we can light each other's faces by their strange luminescence. I'd say the sound effects in this are quite good. It actually sounds like real wind blowing in my ears. Can't say that's well with me wearing headphones, but nonetheless, I thought that was a person, but no, it's a rock. I'm already going crazy, I've been here Probably 20 minutes. Shit. <coughs> well, I am already talking to myself. But. Fucker. Dear Esther, I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. I would leave you presents outside your retreat in this interim space between cliff and beach. I would leave you loaves and fishes, but the fish stocks have been depleted and I've run out of bread. I would row you back to your homeland in a bottomless boat, but I fear we would both be driven mad by the chatter of the sea creatures.
Hmm. That just leads back to the cave. More of this. I don't know what it means. Extent of this cave. I wonder if I'm Esther. I wonder if that's war shallow enough when we get to your side. Never mind, I just... Okay then. I guess I'll see what those rocks are. That I saw earlier. God, the music in this game is pretty. Broken that feeling of loneliness and isolation. Which actually, I'm glad that I'm recording this alone. So it really puts me in the mood of what the character is probably feeling. As walking these lonely paths. I've become convinced I'm not alone here, even though I'm equally sure it is simply a delusion brought upon by circumstance. I do not, for instance, remember where I found the candles, or why I took it upon myself to light such a strange pathway. Perhaps it is only for those who are bound to follow. Hmm. Interesting, actually. Memory, forgetting things could make you feel like you're not alone here. Maybe a bi that's a Bible of some sort. I guess I get another narrator here. Oh, I you know, maybe that's the book the narrator took. And this is where he died, and someone buried him here. linear paths, but it's quite open world. And now I walk through the valley. Not the shadow of death, but just the valley. I don't know if I'm right about that, this might be the valley of death. Looks like I found a new area. And got a silver Dear trophy. Esther, I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. 
but although I have all the reports and all the witnesses and have cross-referenced them within a millimetre using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. I'll end it here. Yeah. Probably a good place to end it. There's a light on over there. 